it's important to remind people that our analysis of conspiritualists is not personal. I'll admit with some of the more out there posts that I see, I'm not always going to hold back my personal feelings. Bullshit is bullshit. But context matters, and I'm a firm believer in both the power of shame and, at times, the power of sarcasm. That said, this week I want to focus on a video by David Wolf, someone who I used to know. We were never close. I DJed a few events that he was involved in, and we hung out a few times. But we were around the same scene for a number of years, so I got to know him a little bit. Now, later, as Matthew said in the intro, I'll be moderating the discussion on cults. And I have been cult adjacent a number of times, but I'm also a lifelong skeptic and somewhat of a cynic. Now, when it comes to David, I could agree with him that chocolate has wonderful health benefits and I enjoyed his products. But when he once told me that chocolate resonates on a direct frequency with the sun, I could only smile and not reply because honestly, not every point is worth debating. He would talk about goji berries and yakan syrup as magical superfoods. Now, I enjoyed eating them, but that's as far as it ever went. But I do have a problem with his recent video, which is linked to in the show notes. It's shot in his car after an anti-mask rally in Calgary. David calls the mask mandate that Calgary just implemented an absolute abomination and totally absurd, and that there's no way I'm wearing a mask. Now, the efficacy of masks is debated even among health professionals, though most agree they provide some amount of protection. But when the issue revolves around freedom instead of health, it's really hard to take seriously. Now, but here's the bigger point. David pivots from that statement to a supposed pedophilia symbol posted on Twitter by Governor Newsom. And that's really what I'm, why I'm discussing this video today. How do we get from masks to pedophiles in two sentences? There wasn't even a transition. David then calls these politicians totally corrupt and then adds they're satanic, actually. Then he says the only thing standing between us and totally, total tyranny is, strangely enough, Donald Trump. He concludes with a random hit on Joe Biden and says we have entered World War III and that it's a war to save children. <sighs> now, Totally pilled, pilled, pilled. <laughs> yeah. There was a PBS documentary on conspiracy theories last week, and it's in the show notes, and you can watch it online for free, and I highly suggest that you do. It's all about Alex Jones, but it gives a really nice context about what we're experiencing right now. Now, there was one part where Jones's ex-wife talked about what happened when Alex started making money for the first time. He became consumed to the point where the only thing he could think about was making more. And I can't help but to think that this thread of more runs through a lot of conspiritualists. In his book, Reefer Madness, the journalist Eric Schlosser dedicates a chapter to pornography addiction. And he points out that in the early VHS days, porn was relatively tame. Porn addicts get acclimated to the missionary position and oral sex. And once that's no longer risque, they move on to more perverse scenes. And at some point, what was previously unthinkable becomes the only way that they can get off, sometimes to the point where sex with actual humans becomes unfulfilling. And really, that's what this QAnon rabbit hole appears to be. Remember, it started with the ridiculous Pizzagate scandal and has only gotten crazier. Now, on Tuesday, shortly after the explosion in Beirut, I jumped over to Q Twitter, and it only confirmed what I already knew. The explosion was being labeled as a conspiracy before news agencies were even reporting on what caused it. And then you have Trump suggesting it was an attack, something no other politician said, because he has to stay one step ahead of the crazies. He knows that's where his votes are. The more confusion and discord he can sow, the more doubt he'll cast on the system as a whole, which is the only way he's going to win this next election. So I'm sorry, David Wolf, but if this is your dude, you have some serious self-reflection to do. You were a very influential voice in the health community. At some point, people figured out goji berries aren't really much of a thing in Tibet. 
And so you have to stay one step ahead to stay relevant in the way that you think that trends are moving. I really can't help but think that so many of these wellness influencers are really only using QAnon as a way to up their profile. Like all these Republican senators and congressmen who stayed quiet, who have stayed quiet during Trump's reign, and they're certainly going to write memoirs about their silent resistance when he's gone. But we have it on record. It's why we started the red pill page on conspirituality.net. You can't erase the internet. And if your only concern is getting more followers today, you're going to pay a much bigger price in the long run. Yeah, I certainly hope so. I mean, it's, it's, it's that whole idea of the Overton window, right? Is if you can introduce into public discourse a completely unthinkable notion uh, to the point where it becomes part of everyone's uh, you know, everyday uh, lexicon that they're exposed to, uh, it starts to seem less bizarre. I wrote that entire piece thinking of the Overton window. I didn't mention it explicitly, so thank you. But that yeah. was in my mind, yeah, and that's yeah. exactly what happens with situations like this. The, this might yeah. be, I don't think we can answer this question really, but uh, Derek, did you get the sense when you were chatting about the chocolate that, um, that, that David wanted to share some sort of like internal, uh, I don't know, revelatory, exp <laughs> revelatory experience with you that he thought you might bond over? Or, or did he want to convey data that would convince you that there was another reason to buy the chocolate? I think he really believes a lot of what he says. Right. I always got that sense. But as I mentioned in that, i am always been cynical. And I think it's just growing up with a father who has a very strong bullshit detector. I've had one too. And there was always, always an element of salesmanship. Right. Because whatever he was talking about at that time is something that his company was selling. 